made by Starbright Productions and Solar Powered Film Studio. I once heard it said that what happens on the day you were born provides a theme for the rest of your life. I'm a millennium baby, born into a time of celebration and joy. I suppose it must have been a strange night though, with so many people partying the night away, not knowing if a computer bug was going to bring down their company, a glitch that would empty their bank accounts the very next day. The date change from 1999 to 2000, bringing about the destruction of their home, their world. It was another dating era that was to bring our downfall. An onslaught too fast and too furious for any of us to cope with. We had evolved in five minutes, learning how to take from nature more efficiently. From the men in the fields to the horse, we deserved the best. We wanted something so much better than we had and put everything into achieving that without any consideration. In our haste, we destroyed the natural world and destroyed ourselves. What we had was more important gadgets and gizmos to help us live faster and better in the short term. We had destroyed 50% of the world's forests and expected the world to still be a good host, our friend. The earth whispered warnings of what was to come. Weather patterns increasingly upset. The largest flood, the worst drought, the greatest storm. It was the greenhouse effect and every scientist had an opinion. First went the insects, the bees. So what? They were unable to pollinate our food and, considering they pollinated about 70% of our crops, that so what was a pretty big deal. Then went the trees, the soil, the animals, the air and the sea. It was so sad, but oh well, we learned to cope. Then the people in Africa, already hungry, began to starve. It's them, not me, was the unspoken attitude of so many, and our brothers and sisters in Asia washed away by the storm that never stopped. We took action by talking and changing its name of course. First the greenhouse effect and then global warming. We looked to science, governments, technology, our faith. The scientists at first were of different opinions, yet by the time I was five years old they'd all agreed. Climate change. It was real, and it was deadly. The debates of course were concluded when you could see palm trees growing outside. Those of another view were flat earthers, helping to flatten the earth's resources. Slow to reach agreement it got much more serious. When I was a teenager, 300,000 people were dying every year from climate change. Yet that was nothing compared to what was to come. Some claimed to have answers, yet were ignored. They knew it was only changing our lives rapidly together that could save us. The shopaholic consumed anyway without drawing the connection between consumerism and taking the food and water from their children's mouths. Some began changing their lives, living in harmony with nature, reducing their footprint, giving back to nature. But without a global strategy in place, we didn't have time to maximise our potential and change our lifestyles together fast enough. We needed to be setting and achieving our targets every day. We all needed to be those green people. Consumerism without care, the illusion of immortality, living without factoring in life, our needs.
Accompanied by our technological jargon, props and gizmos, we proudly marched down a well-worn path. The same path many other great civilizations had walked before us. The Romans, the Greeks, the Incas, Olmecs, the Maya. Each one thinking their civilization would last forever. Like the Easter Islanders, from natural resources we created monuments before nature's stewardship. Details got in the way of survival action in their little world. What was better for appeasing the gods, red stone or grey? They wiped themselves out trying to find out, destroying their ecosystem in the process. Forgetting the greatest monument of all, the monument of life, the beautiful earth. Our lives, taking, taking, taking. Nature's bounty was at the heart of every transaction, yet what about a slice of pie for nature? Nature's reaction, anger. Fires in the summer, storms in the winter. Our land slipped away from our hands, yet with a growing population we needed more land, not less. This of course led to food shortages and the water drying up meant less usable land. We didn't grow food at home much, and with the drying up of oil necessary for the transporting of food, we had created the perfect recipe for a global catastrophe. We would achieve the pinnacle of evolution. The net result? The perfect storm. We are the millennium generation, the last generation, living within the earth, protecting ourselves from the earth. A few of us, the privileged ones, survived, weathered the storm. We were the migrants, refugees heading north, our connections and luck keeping us going a while longer. It was never really a battle to save the planet, it was a battle to save ourselves. The world could survive without people, yet we were more fragile. We couldn't live without water. I was born into a time of trivia, our technological wonder, the wrapping paper masking what lay below the surface. We reached the tipping point, where it was impossible to rebalance and replenish. We took action by putting endless resources into clearing up the mess, not solving the cause by changing our lifestyles rapidly. The ignorant were louder than the learned, locked into petty detail. So we calmly discussed the possibility of our own extinction, ignoring a science that could save us. We established centres to remember the connection we once had to the planet, to life and to each other. Today, every drop of water we collect and store. For food, we work all day. In tune with the rhythms of nature. For transport, we walk. If we need to get somewhere fast, we use bicycles. In times of flood, we had been taught to build arcs to save nature. Yet this message had been forgotten. We were sent so many boats to rescue ourselves and we didn't take up the offer. We look to a civilization that's gone back to dust, where the force of our technological evolution met with the greater force of nature. Within three or four decades, the world shook us off. 
nature gracefully reclaiming the world from our age of technology. We live with a heavy burden, a sadness burning inside us each and every day, wondering if life could have been different. The innocence of life lost forever when we witnessed people killing first for oil, then for water, then food. Every day we pray for forgiveness from our children. We ask forgiveness for building earth without conservation. We came up against the immune system of the earth and called it climate change. Today we talk and plan how we could have saved the world when we had the chance. We build the strategy. Climate change is the result of joined up actions from the melting ice caps to deforestation. The relentless onslaught of greenhouse gases from homes, cars and industry. These combined forces creating the deadliest attack against our civilization: Climate change. The solution was always so simple. Provide a mirror effect. If we apply joined up thinking and combined our positive actions together, we can rebalance the immune system of the earth. Today we scream back to the past generations, change your ways now, hoping they hear our voices, if only as a whisper. I'm a millennium baby, born into a time of celebration and joy. So many had parted the night away, though not really knowing if a computer glitch was going to bring the downfall of humanity the next day. Climate change could have, but it didn't. We survived, we thrived. We were the future generations others spoke of, the ones that would inherit this earth. With our survival instincts heightened, we were not going to stand by and allow our water and food to be taken from us. Oh no, we, the generation of regeneration, were grasping for life, grasping a new edge of discovery. Discovering how we could undo the mess caused by the 50 generations that had gone before us. Born into a silicon world, we knew people across the whole net. We, the PlayStation masters, playing the ultimate game of strategy. A plan to save the planet. It was awesome, global and real, combining forces from NGOs, pressure groups, clubs, companies, unions, associations, schools, universities, retirement homes and governments, together meeting and beating our nemesis, climate change. We were like honeybees setting up hives. Ecoplazas communicating hive to hive via satellite link and internet working together to feed the queen bee, the earth. We launched a global focused attack against mankind's greatest ever danger. Natural disasters, though we can never predict them, we can respond to them much more efficiently with ecoplazas acting as our emergency centers with shelter, food and first aid ready for us all. Supplies for legions of volunteers tithing their skills to help save the lives of others. We entered a time of renewal. We learned how to be green from those with knowledge. Those that had screamed out on behalf of the earth were finally being listened to. We were all a part of the process. Whilst many had worked on being individually greener, we formed a collective. We were recycling the excess resources of whole streets, towns and cities wholesale. We were becoming greener together, learning to survive and thrive in a post-resource rich world.
Eco plazas were monuments to the earth and the infrastructure to help us improve our green living performance. At Eco Plaza, whatever transaction we carry out, a portion goes back to the earth. From tree planting to renewable energy, every transaction has an ecological benefit. They created a thousand new green industries and a million green jobs. Bargaining was rife over the net, everyone figuring out and networking how we could innovate new ways of the earth getting a cut out of any deal. Solutions, labelled Earth Gains, were sent out to companies and organisations and millions of us became the voice for the earth slice in every pie. Companies learned how to adapt to being greener, learned what alternatives were available for every industrial process. Eco plazas were a hub, an antidote for the many social ills we have created. A focal point for community help. Helping the elderly, homeless, the infirm and children with special needs. Eco plaza compassionism in action. How did they begin? By talking. It was a really simple idea. Rather than people taking, taking, taking for their high purpose, their families, they were giving, giving, giving for a higher, real purpose for their families and communities together. Some gave money, some time, some skills. Some gave resources, spare blankets, old doors, surfboards. Some gave rowing machines and bicycles. People gave generously what they could, helping build the necessary new stratas of the carbon neutral economy. An eco plaza was never finished, always a process, always innovating. Knowing that one day, the survival of my family could depend on them. I supported them. Our interglobal web of incremental solutions formed a powerful immune system to protect the earth against us. We needed demonstrations. Demonstrations on how to install renewables across the globe. On how to turn our homes and the land back into a paradise oasis for nature. We learn to source our food locally with our hands in the soil. How to decarbonise our industrial processes through building affordable housing with eco-materials that turn new buildings into carbon sinks. We discovered how to co-create a green economy and jobs. We accessed information on how to insulate our homes. How to companion plant food. How to join the process of saving the world through eating less meat. How to reduce our carbon footprint, car share, eco plaza, the universities of life, schools of natural living, the learned in the community teaching how to green every aspect of our lives. Chance meetings at Eco Plaza help people change their lives collectively and then as individuals. We all invested in our future. They became a beacon of hope, a logistical method for a brighter future in the making. The governments tithed us the resources giving grants and properties, and landowners tithed the portion of their land, lobbying Eco Plazas into their town. Eco plazas were established around the world, from Soweto to New Orleans. At Eco Plaza, a plumber could demonstrate his skills, as could a chef or a DJ with his mixing skills. 
The range of workshops and talks was incredible. Everyone contributing what they could spare and what they could share. A little from everyone soon produced centres with a global resource base of staggering proportions. Generosity was and is contagious as we all paid it forward, co-creating a model of a world saved from climate change, our medicine for healing the earth. At last we created it not in our visions but in our village squares, our vehicle for sustainability, harnessing morale in communities to save the planet. With no rent, rates and volunteer staff, even through buying a single cup of organic coffee at a normal cost, multi-tithing happened. The sale subsidising green workshops, funding cooperatives, keeping carbon sinks safe. The coffee grounds reused to nourish trees, nurtured by volunteers and sold cheaply to locals to replant, cascading into six or seven levels of win-win situations. Ecomonics was the economics within Ecoplaza. This created the necessary new hybrid of green consumerism. It was a built-in structure the consumer didn't have to think of. Multi-tithing taking place with the benefits of their actions, the economics presented through multimedia. Thus, a single purchase benefited the local community, boosted the green economy, helping replenish the Earth's resources and sustaining forest communities. Ecoplazas were established in the same way as backpacker hostels, which in the 90s started providing low-cost accommodation with communal areas and kitchen facilities, an idea born out of Australia which would span the world within a decade, each hostel operating independently yet providing mutual promotion for the others. People visited ecoplazas every week for leisure, bungee jumping, rock climbing and hundreds of interesting eco-leisure activities. We took less international flights for something different, exotic, relaxing and challenging. We no longer needed to trek halfway around the world. It was on our doorstep. A holiday to Eco Plaza could be taken every weekend. Any visit would be multi-tithing, benefiting the local community, funding forest communities. It was the economic model within Ecoplaza that created the magic, a new way to give us charity. Not just money, but resources. Let's see, um, my surfboard, I only used it a couple of months a year, so I loaned it to Ecoplaza for 10 months. They hired it out and raised 300 euros in a year. That paid for the replanting of a whole school garden. Great. And the chain reaction? The kids smartened up on tree planting and then replanted at their homes. People planted window boxes, foliage on roofs. They planted everywhere. Interior design incorporated these plants. It was more than just fashion. It was the fashioning of the man-made world back into harmony with nature linking innovation to art, design and architecture. Eco Plaza, a way of expressing our connection to nature, putting the planet and children before home and work. Companies picked up on these leads, greened their operations and created green jobs for the workers. The green economy built up strong, fast and steady. Every plant a reminder to all of a paradigm shift in global consciousness. Within 10 years, programs to plant trees by the billion were all over the world. 
there were more trees on the planet than at the offset of the Industrial Revolution. Ecoplaza is a hub of new public transport systems that operate with hybrid and vegetable oil powered buses. Entry cost is dependent upon how green the transport is you arrive in. All transactions multi-tithing back to the planet. A sustainable runaway boom in earth gains transformed the world from grey to the green paradise oasis it once was. The latest technologies were developed and showcased and every kid wanted to become a green inventor. An ecological way forging a paradigm shift in our world. We could only win this together. The momentum within us created the momentum in others. Saving the world was so easy, far easier than we had ever thought. All that was required, the collective focus combined with economics of motion. Being careful about our every move, every action geared towards maximising the collective effort in achieving earth gains. Ecoplaza, schools of natural living, the learned in the community teaching how to green every aspect of our lives.